Okay, this is the notes for section 3-4, finding the equation of a line. Um, if you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video and read the section before going on to take these notes. Um, in section 3-4, what we're doing is we're thinking about what is the minimum amount of information that I need to have in order for me to write an equation for a line. And um, so if, if you look at my first sentence here, it says there is exactly one line through two points. So if you think about geometry, that's what we learned in geometry is that if you have two points, those two points determine a line. We also learned in the last section that parallel lines have the same slope. So if we put those things together, if we know two points or if we know a point and a slope, that's enough information for us to be able to come up with an equation for a line. Okay. Okay, so number one says a spring is 23 inches long and has a three pound weight attached. Its length increases three inches with each additional pound of weight added. This is a constant increase situation. Write a formula relating the spring length L and the width W and then graph the equation. So we have the, the two variables that we're looking at here um, is L which would be our dependent variable and W, which are, is our independent variable. Okay, so when we go ahead and we go to, to graph that, or, or excuse me, to, to write an equation for that, what I'm going to do is this: is I'm, I've got my independent and dependent variables of W and L. Okay, now if I know that it's 23 inches long when the weight is three pounds, those two values give me a point that I know would have to be on my line. Okay? So I'm going to identify that point 323 as being a point that's on the line. Okay? We also know that for each pound of increase the um the, the length goes up by three inches. Okay? So what that would represent is the slope of my line. Okay? So now we have a point and we have a slope. We've identified what the independent and dependent variables are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that slope and the fact that I know that any point, uh, the, the difference between the y values over the difference between the x values has to be equal to that slope. Okay? Well, I know any point that's on the, on the line is a point in which the x value is w and the y value is l. So if I go L minus 23, because 23 is the y value of this point, over W minus 3, which is the x value of this point, that has to be equal to 3. Okay? Well, if I solve that for, for L so that I can put it in slope-intercept form, I can multiply both sides by W minus 3. I can then um, uh, distribute the 3 to both the W and the, the negative 3 and then I can add 23 to both sides. If I do that, I get my equation in slope-intercept form, which is L equals 3W plus 14. Okay? So now I'm going to graph that. And when I go to graph that, um, first of all, I'm going to break up my graph something like this. Um, and I'm going to plot my y-intercept of 14. And then I know that for every one I go over, I go up 3. Okay, so if I do that on my graph, I can get some points that I know will be on there. Well, I also know the point 323 is on there, so I've, I've tried to put that on here as well. Okay, and then I can go ahead and um, I can graph that line. And you'll notice that when I graph that line, I, I didn't go... I didn't put an arrow on this side, and the reason why I didn't put an arrow there is because it's not going. We're not going to be looking at um, anything uh, to the left of the 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 y-axis. Okay, yeah, we're just we're, we're just working really in the first quadrant for this. Okay, so that would be the graph of that particular example. Okay, example one kind of leads to something that we call the point-slope form for a line. And basically, if we know a point and we know the slope of that line, we can write an equation in this particular form. And right here we have the point-slope form. Okay, If a line contains a point, well, the point that we're talking about in general then is going to be this point, um, 
x1, y1. And the slope of the line is m. So if I know those three numbers, basically, x1, y1, and m, then I can write an equation, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And, and to, to get, this is a very general equation, to get a specific equation, all I need to do is substitute in three numbers. What is y1, what is m, and what is x1? Okay. This form can be used to write, uh, so once, once I have it in this form, I can manipulate it algebraically to write it in slope-intercept form if I need it. Okay, so let's take a look at example two here. It says write an equation for example one in point slope form. Y is your L value and X is your W value. Okay, so then I, I substituted in what X1, Y1 was. And if you remember right, we had the point um, yeah, 3, 23. So I'm pl plugging that those values in for X sub 1 and Y sub 1. And then we also figured out in example one that our slope was 3, so I'm plugging that in for my slope. So this right here is our equation in point slope form. Now if you go back to what we had up here when we were doing example one, you'll notice that we actually had it in that form right here. Okay, So really, point slope form is just an adaptation of what we did here with the slope in this particular example. Okay, so we've established writing an equation if I know a point and a slope. The other thing that we can do is we can also write an equation for a line if I know two points that are on that line. We know that two points determine a line, therefore we should be able to write an equation for that. So let's take a look at example three here. It says find an equation for a line Q through the point 6, 4, and 15, negative 2. Okay, well if I'm going to do that, um, what I want to do first is I want to find the slope of that line. And if I have two points that are on the line, I can easily find the slope of it okay, using my slope formula. So my slope of the line would be the, which is equal to negative 2 thirds. And it doesn't matter where that negative goes. It could go on the top or on the bottom. Okay, so now that I have the slope, um, I can use that slope and point slope form because I know I ha also have two points. Okay, so if I use the slope and any one of these two points, I can write that equation in point slope form. So here's here we have my point slope form. I'm just going to use, I decided to use the point 6, 4. So it'd be y minus 4 equals negative 2 thirds times x minus 6. Okay, the last new concept that we're looking at here in section 3-4 is the idea of a function being piecewise linear. Sometimes we have functions where um, although every part of the function is, is a line, it's not the same line. So we might have several different line segments put together to make up a particular function. Okay, And that's, that's what we're looking here in this example number 4 where it says write a piecewise linear function for a graph that goes through 0, 0, 50, 40, etc. all of those different groupings of points and then it says use PQ as, uh, as the variable. Okay. Well to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with an equation for each of these different line segments and then put them all together in one function. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I'd look at 0, 0, and 50, 40. Well, that has a slope of 4 fifths. The y-intercept, or in this case the q-intercept, would be 0, 0. Therefore, that portion of the line would be q equals 4 fifths p. Okay, now if I go to the next set of points from 50, 40 to 60, 60, well, that has a slope of 20 over 10 or 2. It also contains these two points, so I'm going to put that in um, point slope form, and then I'm going to convert it to slope intercept form, and we get q is equal to 2p minus 60. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for the third set of points from 60, 60 to 160. Well, the change in y there is 0, so my slope is 0. 
and if I have a slope of zero, I put it into the point slope form, but really it, I, I don't need to. If, it, if I have a slope of zero, it's just going to be a horizontal line at whatever that y value is, in this case 60. So q equals 60 would be the value of that line. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to write all of these, all three of these, in one function. Okay. And here's the way we would do that. Okay. So our function q is equal to four fifths p when p is between zero and fifty. It's equal to two p minus sixty when it's between fifty and sixty, between and including. Okay. And also it's equal to sixty when p is between 60 and 100, inclusive of those values. Okay, So we have a function here, but it's just different lines put together.